Hello and welcome everybody to Google's for Startups Israeli Residency, Residency Showcase. My name is Noam Feinstein and I'm the campus lead and currently lead Google for Startups Israel. We're joined today by startups, Googlers, and many other stakeholders from the startup ecosystem. So we can introduce to you the eight startups we have been working with on our residency program in this past six months. These photos were taken in January 2020 during the kickoff days of the program at our campus in Tel Aviv. We had the opportunity to sit together with our startups and work closely with them until COVID-19 hit. We adjusted quickly and continued supporting the startups remotely. And today we are graduating the program. In a few minutes, we will give you the floor to the startups to present their companies, their successes, their challenges during the program. Later, we'll have Oren Hefet, who has uh, been a director in Israel uh, for the past 12 years, uh, working with startups. And, and lastly, we'll share GFS plans for the next six months. So who are we at GFS? Our mission is to support startups and tech communities and enable them to succeed across every corner of the world. We bring the best of Google's products, connections, and best practices to enable startups grow. We do this by running global and local programs, our own campuses, and by supporting networks and partners of organizations and communities around the world. The campus, as I guess you know, is the physical place where all this magic happens. Unfortunately, the campus is currently closed due to the situation, but we pivot our offering to purely remote. Remote webinars, content, remote office hours, connections, investors, etc. So GFS is working, just not at campus for now. This is the GFS team, where we are available for you startups and founders. So please feel free to reach out if you need any help. The residency program is the flagship uh, program in Google for Startups. We handpick eight startups with innovative products, business potential, and a great team. We support and help them to navigate in the crazy startup journey through our connections, know-how, and resources. We are very much focused also on supporting founders from underrepresented groups, and we are very proud that 50% of the startups in this cohort are led by female founders. A key offering in this residency program is our advisors in residence. These are Google engineers that join the startup effort and help them in their ongoing challenges. In this cohort, we had the privilege to have two exceptional advisors that would, would work closely with the startups, Ariel Ralston and Ayal Bais. Guys, would you like to say a few words? Hi, I'm Ayal. I'm a software engineer from Google and advisor in residence during this residency. I just wanted to say I was glad to participate in the program and to work with those of you who I work, worked with. Uh, and I, I must say I was impressed with the progress you've done during these tough times and the new reality which we're facing. While most of the world went into survival mode, many of you actually managed to do significant progress. And that's truly inspiring. And I wish you all much success. I hope to see your names on TechCrunch soon. And don't let anyone or any epidemic stop you. Hi, everyone. I'm Ariel. I'm uh, also uh, an advisor with the program. I'm a Google engineer, much like Eyal. And, and before coming to Google, I was an entrepreneur. I was a founder for startups. I was a CDO for startups. And uh, Google with, uh, with GFS, uh, allowing, us, uh, allowing us engineers to do something a little, a little different and feel the, feel the startup atmosphere. Um, we are uh, we're grateful that we can help these startups by bringing the best of what Google knows how to do, uh, the, the either knowledge or methodology that we have. Uh, we're lucky to be sharing our resources with tiny startups that are trying to do big things. And uh, to try and see how, uh, like all of our startups just brushed off COVID like it was nothing and moving on. It was great to be in this program. Thanks both for your hard work and dedication in the past six months. I know that the startups found your dedication and, and, uh, and dedication to be valuable and helpful. First, thank you. This residency, residency cohort is really impressive. It is composed of exceptional founders and teams in various verticals. We have startups in health, in HR, uh, and more. 
I truly admire how these startups cope to navigate in these difficult times and even grow their business by raising funds, hiring new employees, and acquiring new customers. So now it is time to meet the startups. I'd like to give the stage to Sarita Mar, our program coordinator in GFS, to introduce you to the startups and walk you through the showcase. Okay, hello everyone. I hope you don't mind the smooth transition. Um, I'm Sarit, as Noam introduced me. Um, and I am going to introduce you uh, to our wonderful startups. Uh, for this cohort, our team carefully selected eight startups uh, out of more than 100 applications. They joined us in January for a second residency cohort in Tel Aviv. Some were part of our existing founder community and others we met for the first time. Each of the founders will present their slides. You may use the chat box on YouTube to ask them questions during their presentations and we'll do our best to answer some of them, time permitting, of course. And now I'm happy to present our first founder, Gal Zabib, co-founder and CEO of Altusta. Hi, Gal. Hey, everyone. My name is Gal and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Altostra. Our mission at Altostra is to make modern development simple. What does it mean, modern development? Let me explain. Back in the days, developers used to host code on local servers, also known as on-premise servers. In early 2000, cloud technologies emerged, and then we were able to deploy code to remote servers. As the cloud evolved, we were able to better utilize cloud resources and use multiple containers at the cost of a single server. So what's the next big thing in cloud technologies? The next big thing is not to use servers at all. What does it mean? It means that the cloud provider are providing the services we as developers need and managing them for us. That is giving us high availability out of the box scalability. And the best part is that we only pay for what we use. So what's the problem? The problem is that instead of a single server or multiple containers, a single application can contain four different services, sometimes 10, sometimes even 20, 30. Well, you get the idea. It becomes very complex to build, manage, and maintain. Not to mention the high cognitive load of knowing and managing multiple services. So, what, so how are we solving it? We created an abstraction layer to the cloud providers that automate DevOps processes of creating new architecture and managing an existing one. You don't need to be a DevOps expert in order to build an application. And if you are an expert, we're saving you a lot of time. We're bringing our solution right into developer's workspace to make it seamless to use Altostra and create immediate value. We complete our offering by providing a management console where you can get a clear view of your organization's assets and control them. Using Altostra can speed up software del delivery by 5x, prevent production issues before they happen, and even control spend by controlling your cloud environments. We have a team of experts, software engineers with major experience from the Israeli intelligence corps, the Air Force, and also leading companies like NSO, Logs.io, Outbrain, and more. During Google residency, we were able to get a lot of feedback from our fellow founders and their dev teams, improve our product, and start pilots with SMBs. That was a huge step for us. We're using our own platform, and we noticed that during COVID-19, while everyone is working from home, our productivity increased. That gave us the clarification that productivity is, is necessary, not just in the video communication space, but also in the cloud development space. And we are here to make it happen. Thank you for listening, and please visit us at altostra.com. Thank you, Gal. That was great. Um, thank you for all your hard work during this program. We're moving on now to a startup, uh, one of the startups who's been with us since one of our earliest days here at campus. I'm happy to present Shirani Roslavsky, CEO and co-founder of Cassiopeia. Hi, everyone. I'm Shirani, the CEO of Cassiopeia. Um, and I wouldn't generally share it, and probably you're the first one to hear this story in public, but 
the last few months have been extremely challenging for our team. Only eight months ago, we were backed by Techstars. We were announced as one of the most promising seed stage startup at Web Summit, the global tech conference. Traction was growing, and I decided to move to the Bay Area to be closer to our customer base. And then, well, COVID-19 hit us. Um, all our paid pallets and wallets uh, were just frozen. And let me roll back a bit. Uh, well, because UPS technology knows how to analyze communication patterns, data like who sent to whom and when, and we're not analyzing any content, um, and we provide insights about team behavior. Initially, we were focusing about uh, providing insights about non-inclusive behavior, uh, working with large enterprises in the US, UK, and Israel. Um, and as COVID-19 hit, two of our customers reached out to us and asked for our help as they experienced new managerial and team challenges. And they were absolutely right. Um, COVID-19 accelerated the adoption of remote work and remote work uh, has amazing uh, benefits, uh, but also to create new challenges for both employees and managers. According to research, 66% of remote employees experience difficulties with loneliness, work-life balance, collaboration, communication, or staying motivated. While for managers, 77% of managers indicate it's harder for them to manage their team remotely. Uh, as a remote leader, um, you're just basically working with a smaller data set. You don't have all these small data points you used to have in the office. You don't see how people engage, if they are smiling during the day, with whom they're drinking coffee. Um, so basically, it's much harder for you to sense the team dynamics. And we decided to act fast. <laughs> so uh, we just released in last April Kusipia's remote work solution. Uh, we use our technology to analyze communication patterns and provide insights for managers, actionable insights about how to improve collaboration, belonging, and mental health within fully or partially remote teams. Um, and I told you that we released our solution only last April. Since then, uh, we were featured in Forbes, Fast Company, and Globes talked in the um, best people leaders uh, conferences um, over, all over the world. We filled our pipeline with dozens of organizations that want to use Casipia, and we onboarded new advisors, thought leaders in the space of remote work and uh, future of work. And on in the last months, we signed up three paying customers that use Casipia. I'm Shiran the CEO of Kasipia. If you are also passionate about empowering today's and tomorrow's leaders with the insights they need to lead great companies, come talk to us and let's do it together. Thank you. Thank you, Shian. That was great. And also joining us is Toma Laszlo, co-founder and head of product uh, at Kasipia. Hi, Toma. How are you? Good. How, Good. How, are you? How, are you? How are you? Thank you. That presentation was excellent. Uh, I wanted to ask you a question we got. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the data sources that you analyze at Cassiopeia? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's a great question. question. Uh, uh, we can easily integrate to all common services uh, such as Zoom, Slack, G Suite, Mail, or Calendar, Outlook, Teams, and much more. Um, but it's important to mention that we only analyze metadata, do not analyze or store any content in order to keep the privacy of our users. Thank you. It's great to hear from you and good luck. Uh, we're moving on next to uh, an interesting and up and coming maritime startup. Um, we are going to introduce you to Uri Yosilevich, CEO of DocTech. Hi, everyone. My name is Uri. I'm the CEO and founder of DocTech, and we help ships and maritime operation managers take more cargo in a safer way. One of the significant factor in this world of maritime logistics is water depth. Water depth dictates how much cargo can you load upon a vessel. And as we all know, when you load a vessel, it sinks and gets closer to the ground. And we have to make sure that it's not too close to the ground 
to the ground because it's risky. So there is a challenge in determining how much cargo can we, can we load and how safe are we going to be from the ground. But we are developing a solution that gives you both of the advantage, maximum efficiency and maximum safety at once. Our technology takes advantage of the fact that today's vessels are equipped with numerous sensors on board. We extract the data from the sensors, we upload it to the cloud, to the cloud integrate it together with, with external data sources, and then we can say in real time what are the depths along the ports and the rivers now. Even when we, when we um, sorry, when we have more, uh, more, more data from the same location, we are able to say what will be in the next future, in the next couple of days, week, or even months. That is super important when you're planning for uh, maritime logistic processes, which can be longer than a couple of days. We have several projects that are currently running around the world that we are super proud of. And we have some other projects in our pipeline. Our team comes from both technical uh, domain expertise and maritime domain expertise. And together with our advisors and the wonderful programs that we participated in, we have the broad network and skills to get this job done. During residency, we signed two super important uh, pilots with both local and global customers. And we added two top-notch advisors into our family. The COVID pandemic made us understand how vital is our sector for the world economy. And we now everybody understands the necessity of the shipping industry to bring medical supplies and, and basic needs that every country requires. We started to deploy our, our product remotely, which means that we have zero contact with new customers. We maintain the steady routine which is super important in this time of remote uh, working from, from remote. And we understand and distinguish the, the difference between a must and a nice to have. And we emphasize of being, of, of being a must to have uh, solution and make sure that we do not seem like a nice to have. We are growing, expanding, and looking for talented people to join the family Thank you, Uri. That was wonderful. If you'd like to reach out to Uri, please do so with that. Details you can still see on the screen. And now we'll be moving on to uh, our next startup, Embryonics. And Yael Zamir, the CEO and co-founder, will be presenting for Embryonics. My name is Yael Gold Zamir. I'm co-founder and CEO at Embryonics. Embryonics develops AI algorithms to improve the process and results of IVF. IVF or in vitro fertilization, is a widely used definitive treatment for infertility. During IVF, the natural process of fertilization is replaced with a laboratory procedure. As you can see, we have 12 talents on board, and we are very proud to have Professor Alex Bronstein, who is the head of the Intelligent System Unit in the Israeli Technion, and David Silver, who is a machine learning expert, ex-senior researcher at Apple, my co-founder is on board. Why did we choose to work toward improving IVF? Infertility is growing globally, and so the need for IVF as a treatment. Statistically, each of us either had personal experience with IVF or knows someone who underwent IVF. IVF exists more than 40 years now, but some major parts of the process are still stuck in the same traditional, subjective, and manual methods like in 1990. And eventually, success rates of the process are quite low, around 30%. On top of it, the process itself of IVF is invasive, painful, and also expensive. The average cost of an IVF baby is around $36,000 in the United States. So, IVF is based on a great science, and there is no argue about this, but in terms of technology, 
it's obvious that the field is left behind. And this is exactly what Embryonics is trying to change. Our vision as a company is to build an holistic AI platform that will manage and support the whole decision-making process along the life cycle of IVF to ease and shorten the journey of those who struggle to become parents. I'm very proud to share with you today our first commercially available product, Ubar. By the way, Ubar is the Hebrew word for fetus, which is Ubar. So Ubar is an AI software platform that monitors developing embryos and selects the best embryo for transfer significantly better than a human expert. As I mentioned, Ubar now is commercially available. Our business model is B2B2C. So we work with IVF centers to make the program available for IVF patients. And actually we're just gaining our first uh, paying customers and it's a very exciting time for the company. So first, I think it's a great opportunity to thank the amazing team of Google for Startups in Tel Aviv. We had really great time. So I think that our biggest win during the company was that we moved from a state of a company that is focused on R&D, on research and development. One of the major steps that you have to take, and it was a very significant uh, step for us and a very significant progress for us. And as I just mentioned, we are now we are finishing the, the, this residency and we have a working product and first paying customers. I'm really excited about this and I'm, and I'm thankful for this. I'll be very happy personally to keep in touch with Google for Startups in Tel Aviv and uh, with the other startups at the program. And also with you, you have my email here and feel free to reach out. Thank you and have a good day. That was great. Uh, yeah, and the team, we loved having you in our program. It was so exciting to have you on board. Um, and good luck, of course. Next up, we have Omer Glass, CEO of GrowSpace. Hi, Omer. Well, hi, guys. Uh, it's great to be here. And uh, basically, GrowSpace, they were on a vision, on a quest, like to develop the best tool for employee development, the best platform for employee development uh, in organizations. When you start a startup, it's good to go somewhere uh, where things are not going so well. So uh, these are um, like uh, some uh, data from uh, recent uh, studies in the employee development space that basically everyone is not so um, happy about the, the way things are done currently. And I think the most interesting is the figure on the right. Like, think about it. Organizations pay a lot of money to develop their employees, and 88% of the employees are saying, I haven't applied anything I learned in my employee development program into my actual thing that I'm doing, which is kind of crazy. And we start asking ourselves, okay, so what is effective? And uh, on, on the left side, you can see some uh, famous uh, characters that uh, what's common for uh, all of them. Uh, first of all, is that every one of them had their executive coach. So this is a very, very effective and popular way to uh, develop executives, the one-on-one, -on -one, like working with you on your specific challenge by experts, uh, which is, uh, had the specific experience. Uh, but the problem is it can't go for the message, right? Because uh, it's very expensive and it's hard to manage scale. So we basically figured out, okay, so is a trade-off if you can flip to the next slide is um, there is a problem of like making something that is scalable and relevant, right? Because if you want to make it very relevant, what I spoke okay, before, okay, you give executive coaching, but then it's not scalable. If you want to give something for all your employees, you give them workshops, which is cool, but again, it's not tailored your thing. So if you can click just one click, I'll have the animation here, and we overcome this trade off and basically create the relevancy of executive coaching, which means one-on-one -on -one program tailored by the way i'm sorry about the graphics it's terrible but um yeah i usually work with that powerpoint <laughs> and the scalability of the of the like generic training like you make it uh, basically uh, available for everyone in the organization how we do it first of all we make it affordable it's something that has to be done in order to make it happen it's short and focused I mean, i'm not giving you an expert to work with you for the following year we do like very short uh, sprints focused on your uh, top challenge and everything is done online now it's easy everything is online and 
and we started it like over a year before we COVID started. And if you can click on the next slide, one other thing very important for us is to be aligned with business KPIs. And basically, we made it, we tailored it into our model from day zero. We want not only the programs that the, the employees will enjoy, we want it to actually change the way they work, to change and impact their actual business KPIs, where, whether it's sales, R&D, customer success, whatever. And uh, so before the programs, we basically developed a unique way of uh, measuring uh, the KPIs for the program and which involve basically the management and uh, not only the employee. And when we finish the program, we go back to see what impact did we make in sales, on our and productivity, on customer churn. Yeah, that's so uh, as I said, we're established in uh, 2019 and we're on one employee developed marketplace. And uh, we currently work with over 200 global experts from uh, Japan to the uh, United States. Uh, they are uh, both coaches and professional mentors. Um, currently, we work with over 25 global customers. You can see some of their logos on their uh, right. And we focus on growing global tech companies. And the next version of our product, which I guess maybe in the next time we'll be here, we'll present, is basically to take, uh, no, never mind. Yeah. It's to take what we do on one on one and basically connect. Um, uh, the way um, uh, organizations develop their employees into all the things, not only coaching and mentoring programs, but also workshops, management training, and basically uh, becoming the world's first data-driven platform for employee development in organizations. And uh, the last slide is uh, uh, the gadget uh, GFSA asked us uh, what happened uh, at Roadpath uh, since we started there. So um, uh, I actually went back to the presentation we gave them, and it's very nice uh, for us to see that we made some progress in like new logos and sales user uh, experts working with us. And line of the code, the figure on the right is a very rough estimate by our CTO. I asked him how many lines of code. He said, "Yeah, right, 200." So uh, yeah, it, it was a great pleasure to be here. I recommend highly uh, GFS. It was like amazing, amazing journey, and uh, all the best. Thank you so much, Omer. That was wonderful. Um, we'll be moving quickly next to Arthur, uh, CEO and CTO of Jovia Next. Hi, my name is Arthur and I'm the founder and CEO of Jovia Next. Jovia Next is essentially a platform that helps you build SaaS products. So if you think of what it takes to build a SaaS product today, it's still pretty hard to do. And you have to develop a lot of enablement services in order to make your SaaS product work. You need to figure out multi-tenancy, user management. You need to make sure that you're standing up within the, the SLA that you promise to your customers. And that basically takes usually building this enablement, these enablement services usually takes around from half a year to a couple of years. And it takes a group of five developers to do that. So that's a super long time to market, pretty much expensive. and Basically, you're reinventing the wheel while doing that. Introducing Jovi NX. So Jovi NX is basically a platform that helps you manage and control your SaaS, or in other words, it's the control plane for your SaaS application that you offer to your customers. You simply upload your software and your SaaS is ready to go. So to us, any SaaS application basically has some sort of business logic and you're working and focusing solely on that business logic uploading and onboarding your product into the platform. From that point on, we add additional three main pillars around that business logic in order to turn that into a full-blown SaaS application. So these uh, three pillars are basically the element of subscription management, which basically allows you to onboard and serve subscriptions to, to accounts. The, the element of self-service, allowing your customers to sign up, sign in, change their account details, their payment information, etc. And, the, and lastly is the managed service features that basically allow you to maintain the SLA of your product, allowing you to monitor, get alerts, et cetera, and making sure your product is up and running. And Jovianx is, is the pre-integrated platform with all these functionalities and capabilities that allow you to focus on solely on your business logic. So during the GFS program, the Google for Startup program, we had a major progress on our product. And we basically, we also stood up and battle tested our product, standing up a, a network operations center, monitoring center to, to, uh, to ensure the SLA of our own product. And on top of that, we are a bootstrap and profitable company. 
And during the GFS program, we have doubled our current revenue and tripled our, 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 uh, our sales pipeline and started targeting the U.S. market. So that's uh, super exciting times for us. And we had a lot of, uh, a lot of fun during the program. Uh, also debugging and, and, and troubleshooting the, the, the product environment and making sure that it's production ready and battle tested with real world use cases. So what we've have, what have we learned during the COVID nineteen uh, period and 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 uh, our our thinking around around uh, around working with this interesting time? So firstly, is that people obviously now working from home uh, spend much less time on commute and are much more available uh, for 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 meetings. So if you ask for meetings, you get, you're gonna get a lot more meetings uh, that you used to have before. And secondly, is that the, the location now is less important for sales. So if previously it was quite important in an enterprise B2B sale to meet your prospect and, and during the sales process right now, everyone has sheltered and basically doing business over Zoom or over a video chat uh, is, is definitely acceptable and becomes much, much easier. So that's, that's very good for uh, startups and companies and not located in their target uh, market uh, location. And lastly, the, you know, obviously we are in the SaaS business, in the cloud business, and we're seeing that, that's, that this whole COVID-19 pandemic uh, is, is a major catalyst for SaaS in general and in the, in the, in the enterprise specifically as well. So we're seeing a lot, of more, a lot more traction around enterprise, larger enterprise customers consuming more and more SaaS products and SaaS services. So obviously for us, uh, that has been uh, helpful. So thanks for thanks uh, for uh, for for uh, listening to us and and would be happy to give you a product demo. So feel free to reach out and uh, thanks for the amazing program, Google. Thank you so much, Arthur. And we are moving on uh, to Vital Guter, co-founder and CEO of. Hi everyone! Thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Uh, I'm going to present you Legions and what we do. So my name is Lital Gruper, I'm the co-founder and CEO, and I come from a sales background. And my co-founder and CTO, Sergei Bakhtisavaitse, is the mastermind and the wizard behind all of our technology and our data processes. The, what is the problem that we are solving? So small and medium businesses represent a key sales segment for large enterprises that are trying to sell to them. Uh, bringing over $1.8 trillion in financial services alone. However, um, the sales process is actually quite hard, and companies often lose money on the first year of acquiring a small and medium businesses because of the low margin and the high acquisition cost. And one of the key contributors is extensive use of sales development representatives in over 90% of companies in the sales process. Legion's solution is to improve the SDR efficiency and save companies over 30% of the cost of sale. And there are three components uh, to, to be able to do that. The first and most important one is to be able to identify when is the right window of time to reach out to a small, medium business or when they have a certain issue or problem. And therefore, now is the right time because they need a solution for that problem. The second part is to automate uh, the reach out in a hyper-personalized way across multiple different platforms in order to reduce the amount of time and admin that the sales development representative is, uh, um, is busy doing this uh, part. And last but not least is to provide comprehensive background data to the salesperson to help him or her personalize the sales call in order to improve sales conversion rates. A few key points about our traction and progress during residency. Uh, so we've been quite busy, as you can see. We managed to raise uh, SID funding. Our monthly revenue grew by over 500%. Our clients are happy with the data and they're seeing great results. And of course, what has enabled all of this is uh, all of our data processing which grew by nearly five times. None of this could have been possible without the help and guidance of the residency. So thank you very much, guys. Lastly, a few lessons that we have learned during COVID. 
we spent a lot of uh, time with our existing clients identifying what are their new pains and issues and helping them overcome it. And in our case, it was how to help them continue selling during COVID. We then used those lessons that we learned and the key takeaways and the words that they used to fuel our own sales and our own reach out to new businesses. And on the sl slides here on the right, you can see an example of a one pager that we sent um, that helped us land a new and quite large client even during COVID. I would recommend any startup out there to also utilize this approach. It has, it has worked very well for us. If you have any additional questions, we're here to answer them. Or if you would like, you can go on our website. Thank you very much. That was great. I really love listening to the talent you're presenting. And we're going to be joined for a second by Sergey, who's the co-founder and CTO for Legions. And Sergey, hi. Uh, I'd like to ask hi, you, hi. Can, you talk us, uh, can you talk to us a little bit about the new markets you're planning to enter in the next few months? Yes, yes. Sure. We have covered Europe. Uh, by today, so we have customers from multiple countries over there. And uh, as we speak, we're expanding to the United States, uh, which we are already prepared to sell. That's great. Thank you so much and good luck. Thank you, thank you very much. Now we're moving on to our last founder, uh, and that's Miron. Miron Perel is the CEO of Soundtrack AI. And uh, let's move to him. Let's hear what he has. Hi everyone, my name is Ron, I'm CEO and co-founder of Soundtrack AI. And we help you make the most of your mechanical assets by listening to your machine. Our deep tech platform analyzes the acoustic signature of mechanical system and automatically monitors the performance to identify anomalies. And we can do that in an extremely efficient way. There are a lot of sensors out there, so why use acoustics? It turns out that sound has some specific qualities that are very valuable. We can use a single sensor to monitor a large number of components and issues, and it is completely unobtrusive. We don't even need to see it to measure it. And we're using this technology today to automate testing processes that are done today and to monitor and diagnose the behavior of manufacturing machinery. And all of this in a cost-effective, simple way. Our groundbreaking breaking platform uses a unique combination of acoustic engineering and machine learning. And as a result, it is extremely efficient compared with anything else out there. We need only minutes of recording compared with hundreds of hours that are traditionally required to create a monitoring model. And our monitoring, ex our model extraction process takes weeks, sometimes only days compared with months that others need. The bottom line of this efficiency is that it opens up a whole world of use cases that were simply not economical to perform until now. Our expert team brings decades of experience in the field of machine learning and acoustic engineering. We spent three years building, testing, and perfecting our technology. And in 2020, we've been hard at work implementing it with global manufacturing and aerospace leaders, from monitoring a life support system on board the International Space Station, through identifying anomalies on industrial cranes and automating the analysis of flight testing data and saving our clients hundreds of engineering hours. As we all know, the past months have been challenging and we've been very fortunate to be able to continue and develop our solution offering. I'm happy to say that all our projects that we started this year have been successful, that we are entering into a commercial agreement with our clients. Thank you very much. And I'll be happy to answer any questions in person. Uh, thanks you all for presenting and thanks Sarit. Uh, this is amazing. I truly admire to see how your startups cope and grew your company in these difficult times. Uh, in addition to the business successes that you just heard, uh, I can share with you that the people are extraordinary. They are um, they're modest, hardworking, creative, and, uh, and when the, well done everybody. And it's been a pleasure working with you. On a personal note, I would, I would also like to thank Sarit so much for her central role in this program. Thank you so much, Sarit. It could not have been the same without you. And now we are moving on, and we are honored to have Oren Hefetz with us. Oren is a director in Google Israel, working with startups for the past 12 years. He has been working with them in all stages, since they were small teams until they even IPO'd. Uh, so thanks, Oren, so much for joining us. 
Thank, thank you very much, Martin. And uh, thank you for having me. It was uh, inspiring to see all the work you're doing from improving IVF to improving HR in uh, the very challenging days that we're all experiencing, working from home, as you can see uh, right behind me. Um, and um, I'm uh, super happy to welcome you to the Google family. You, you've been a part of the Google for Startup family for the last uh, six months or so, but now after graduation, uh, there's much more we can do together uh, at Google in Israel. Uh, as Noam said, I'm working for Google in Israel in Tel Aviv for the last 12 years. Uh, in my in my uh, recent role in the last three years, I'm working closely with uh, tech companies and startups, helping them grow their business and scale globally with uh, Google platforms, with uh, Google Search and uh, YouTube. Uh, in order to find customers and sell their solutions and, and services. Um, and it's truly inspiring to, to have the role that I have and, and watch the amazing work the Israeli entrepreneurs are doing throughout the years. Um, exactly like I saw now with your short presentations uh, as a summary for this residency program. Um, I want to start with a short story uh, to maybe emphasize and, and, and give you um, a blessing to the continue of the road uh, in your entrepreneurship uh, journey uh, with a story about a startup that uh, most of you probably heard about them, Fiverr.com. Uh, it's not a new startup. They found it uh, 10 years ago or so. And me and my team started to work with them around eight years ago, uh, helping them grow their business, their marketplace for uh, freelancers. And, and uh, it was an amazing journey with them that ended up in... Uh, successful IPO in NASDAQ last year. Uh, and even today, during the global pandemic and the impact of COVID-19 on, on all of us and all lines of business, they managed to uh, identify the opportunity that they have uh, when people are uh, shifting to work from home. And that's exactly what their platform is uh, helping to solve. And they're seeing also great success during those very challenging times. Uh, so my maybe wish to you is uh, some of the karma that uh, uh, Fiverr got from the actual same building of Google for Startups in Tel Aviv. Uh, they worked there for a few years before they moved to another building in Tel Aviv when they grew and uh, it wasn't big enough. Uh, so if some of this luck and, uh, and success will stick on you and uh, from what I've heard in completely different areas, obviously, but from what I've heard from you that there's a lot of potential in uh, the things that you're doing. So. Uh, I wish you a lot of luck. Talking a little bit about what we're seeing um, around uh, the pandemic and the impact on it on, on the startup uh, scene and ecosystem here in, in Israel, I have to say that, again, it's uh, it was remarkable to see the agility and the fast uh, acting of all those entrepreneurs uh, to deal with, uh, with the challenges that they're facing currently because of the changes that we're experiencing in the world. Exactly like you mentioned in some of your presentations, uh, the uh, fast response and the agility is one of the, let's say, landmarks or, or trademarks of the Israeli startup uh, nation. And I think that we we see it again. I also heard from Noam uh, that, uh, and from you also now in the presentations, that throughout this journey, even through the uh, COVID um, pandemic that uh, we are facing, you manage to uh, raise funds to to get new customers and to uh, hire more people. So it's a great sign to hopefully a, a bright future ahead of you. Um, a few words about what does it mean to become a part of the Google wider family? As, uh, as you know, we're doing a lot of things in the campus that you probably know better than me after working six months with a great team there. Uh, but uh, apart from the activity in the campus, we offer a lot of support to startups across Google Globally and in Tel Aviv, more specifically, we have um, big teams that can help you both on the cloud side and uh, on the uh, growth side when it comes to driving uh, marketing activities and, uh, and uh, using Google search and the YouTube platforms in order to grow your business globally. Um, we also run a couple of uh, acceleration programs uh, from Google for Startups, and I guess that Norm will share more details about it later on. Uh, that will start later in H2. One of them is dedicated to cloud. The other one is for female founders, which is a great opportunity to some of the female founders that I saw here. And uh, the last and not least, which is something that is dear and near to my heart, 
uh, is an accelerator that we're operating for the last two years in Tel Aviv, a project that we call Google for Startups Growth Lab, which is basically uh, taking the knowledge and, and know-how that me and my team uh, developed throughout the years, trying to squeeze it into four months or six months, depending on the program, and giving a lot of value in terms of go-to-market strategies, industry analysis, um, the UX and UI, uh, and all things related to your uh, marketing goals and leveraging Google platforms in order to do it in the best way. Uh, we're just finishing the third cohort of the Google for uh, Startup Growth Lab, and uh, stay tuned for the fourth one that we will probably uh, launch in a few months' time. So uh, that's basically it. As I said, I'm very impressed with what I saw. I wish you a lot of success going forward. Um, as some of you mentioned, be healthy, the first thing, happy and good luck. And with that, I'll send it back to Noam to conclude. Thank you very much. Thank you, Oren. Thanks so much for joining and for your insights. I think that the key takeaway is that you're all part of the Google's broader family. And I hope to see you in, in different and future programs with various Google teams. So this is not the end, but rather the beginning. So lastly, what's next for us in GFS? We, we will continue to support startups and tech communities remotely in different ways. First, as part of our focus to support underrepresented groups of founders, we are partnering with Women of Startup Nation to run a female founder accelerator in July and August. These are 11 selected startups with a female founder that, that will take part in a 100% remote accelerator. We are also supporting a growth accelerator, accelerator that is run by Google Sales Team, as Oren mentioned, where B2C startups get content and support to scale their business. Of course, we will continue to be present and sent in central into Israeli ecosystem, delivering unique webinars, content, providing office hours to the communities, and continue to connect and help startups grow. On a regional level, GFS is planning to have three European accelerators in the next few months. One for black founders, one for female founders, and one for cloud startups. These accelerators will be open to companies throughout Europe, including Israel. So stay tuned and make sure you're open your weekly newsletter with more information and registrations link to be sent soon. So we are wrapping, wrapping, wrapping it up. We have reached the end of this first remote graduation. I hope it will be the last one that is purely remote. Uh, Rosetity Startups, thank you for taking such an active part in the program. This is the end of the program, but our relationship and support are here to stay. We wish you best of luck. Thanks everyone else for attending, for being part of our extended community and for joining today. We hope to see you and meet you in person soon. Stay safe and healthy everyone from the entire GFS Israel team. Thank you.